And so we come to the death of Socrates. Uh, this great thinker and beginner of philosophy met his end at the hands of the Athenian assembly, uh, where he was tried for uh, corrupting the youth of Athens by teaching them sophistry uh, or, or by teaching them false things and, and false rhetoric, and also being accused of not believing in the gods. Uh, and one of our most famous uh, bits of writing about Socrates is from his student Plato, uh, who was 28 at the time and present at the trial, um, and later on wrote uh, a series of, of books about uh, about the last days of Socrates. One of them, the Euthyphro, uh, talks about him going up to the trial and meeting a friend of his, Euthyphro, and having a long extended discussion with him about what is justice. Uh, the next, the Apology, uh, is Socrates giving his defense before the Athenian assembly of himself, and that was what you had bits and pieces of in your in your reading of his defense. Uh, and ultimately, the uh, the trial goes against Socrates, um, and he's sentenced to death. And before he dies, he has uh, another book that Plato writes is the Crito, where he uh, discusses at length his uh, the reasons that he will not escape and run away, uh, but must face his death, and also the fact that he doesn't fear death, he's not afraid of death. And then a final uh, work of Plato's where he talks about uh, the, the final moments for uh, Socrates and how he met his end uh, by willingly drinking hemlock. And uh, so this is one of the most uh, famous uh, and really kind of in-depth and personal uh, looks that we have at an ancient philosopher. Um, and so I wanted to kind of show you a little bit what this might have looked like. So uh, here is the Apology of Socrates followed by his, um, by his death. Men of Athens, my, my accusers have been Convincing, haven't they? As I would listened and heard my own accusations made against me, I was almost convinced myself that this Socrates is a great harmer of the good of Athens. But then I recalled who was being accused, and I recalled my own reasons uh, for the things that I do. And so I stand before you to give you my apology, my defense of what I have done and what I have said. And I must uh, remind you, my, my accusers have tried to warn you against my speech that I will use tricky language to try and confuse you and to trick you. Uh, but I am, I am no great rhetorician as my accusers are, and I have no such powers of rhetoric. Indeed, I am a simple man simply seeking to prove myself innocent in this circumstance. Well, first of all, I must begin at the beginning with the accusation that I teach the, that I mislead the youths of this city, and that I teach against the gods, I think, as it were, something like that. Uh, but I must confess that the whole beginning of my mission began at the Oracle of Delphi, for it was there that one of my good friends went and asked the god at the Oracle of Delphi whether or not Socrates was the wisest man on earth, and the Oracle said to him that indeed I was. Well, I, I did not send my friend to do this, and unfortunately he has passed on now, but you can ask his brother here in the audience. He will tell you the truth of what I say. Uh, and I could not believe it when I heard this. I do not count myself to be a wise man, and so I thought that the god must have something else in mind, something else to prove, and so I began looking around for other wise people and trying to find someone who was wiser than myself to prove that the god must have meant something different. So I went to someone who I thought to be a wise man, and I began to ask him questions. And as I asked him questions, seeking his wisdom, I found out that he was not as wise as I had hoped, but that in fact perhaps I was, in my own ignorance, was wiser than he. And so I went to another and did the same, and once again found that he was not as wise as he had been reputed. And woe is me, I came to the conclusion that the god must mean something Along the lines of that, if Socrates is the wisest of men, look at how impoverished is the wisdom of men compared to the wisdom of the gods. For I know my own wisdom to be nothing uh, extraordinary, and yet even those who are considered wise were not able to show me wisdom. And so, uh, in consternation, I continued to seek out others who could, uh, who, could, who, who could teach me what it means to be wise. Well... As I did this, as you can imagine, I made 
many enemies. And also, uh, many of the youth, the Athenian youth, came and liked to watch as I asked these questions of rich and wise citizens because they enjoyed it when I was able to show that they did not know as much as they purported to know. And I, I claim no, no responsibility for that. I was simply seeking to find someone wiser than myself, and the youths liked to watch, and they practiced then the same things themselves. Now, I have been accused of sophistry, of teaching the youths these, uh, these methods, and yet, in reality, I, you can see my poverty. I have gained no wealth from this sort of teaching. In fact, I have heard of other sophists, other teachers who have taught wisdom and have been and people have paid them as much as five drachmas to be taught wisdom. Well, I've said of them, good for them that they are making money teaching wisdom. I have no such wisdom to offer and, and am poor. And as you can see, I have never become wealthy through my teachings, nor have I required anyone to come and listen to me, but of their own free will they have come. And so I must confess that I am no polluter of the youth of Athens by intention. And I have also been accused of not believing in the gods. <sighs> but I ask you, can I believe in spiritual things and not believe in spiritual beings? For I believe in spiritual truths and a spiritual world and the spirit and the soul of man. In fact, my whole mission is to encourage others to think more of their souls and the health of their souls and to seek what is true and what is just. So how can I then not believe in the gods? Would you say that you believe in things relating to horses but do not believe in horses themselves? That would be folly. And so in the same way I cannot be said to not believe in the gods because I believe in spiritual beings and spiritual truths. So that is just flat nonsense that I do not believe in the gods. In fact, I think that the gods have given me as a gift to Athens, that my purpose is to lead Athens uh, into truth and virtue. I have often thought of myself as being like a gadfly or a horsefly coming upon the sleeping form of Athens and stinging it into awakeness, because so many among us are asleep are forgetting what our true purpose is, that we are made to seek the good of our souls, and we are mired in the, the, the sleep of loving the things of this world too much. So I, the gadfly, come to rouse the city of Athens to a greater heights of goodness and of virtue, and for that, I, my friends, I almost feel that I should be rewarded for such kind service to the city, from which I have never gained even as much as a penny. Uh, in fact, I have sacrificed my entire life and my livelihood in order to serve the great city of Athens. And so I plead with you, my friends, my brothers, to see what I am trying to do for the city, and to see that I am no corrupter of the youth or disrespecter of the gods. Ah, I see, friends, that you have found me guilty of these charges. While other men in my position might bring in their friends and their families, of which I do have a wife, Xanthope, and two young boys, might bring in their families to weep and to plead with you for their lives, I will not dishonor you so by appealing only to your emotions and trying to make you feel pitiable towards me. No. Rather, I have been given the opportunity to uh, suggest an alternate punishment uh, than death. And I begin to think to myself, if my purpose has been to bless and to bring glory to the citizens of Athens, why, in some ways, I am much like the Olympic champions who bring glory to Athens through their great feats of strength and of speed. And if they, for their victories, receive Pu uh, a public and lifelong supply of food at the public expense? Then, uh, my friends, I believe that my punishment should be the same, that I should be kept up at public expense for my services to the city as a, a gadfly, as it were. But if that is not acceptable, which I can see from your faces that it is not, what other options have I? To pay a fine? As you can see, I have no money with which to pay such fine. That I should be imprisoned? What would that bring to me that is good? 
to continue in life, but to be caged like a like a beast. No, not for me. Or that I should be exiled, as some have been before. But, my friends, my brothers, Athens is my heart, and to be apart from her would be worse than death itself. And so, I shall choose death. And who knows? Who knows but God what death is? It is one of two great things, either that it is sleep eternally, rest and peace, and who, what king among us, would not give all of his wealth to have that kind of sleep, to be so well rested? And perhaps that shall be my fate, or, as some others believe, my soul shall live on afterwards, and I descend to Hades and to the lords of the dead, and receive from them my just punishment, and from then I shall truly receive justice. And then to wander among the souls of the dead, and to find there who is most wise among them. To talk to Hector, and to Odysseus, and to Achilles, and to find out their views on life and their, uh, their minds. Why, that is something for which I long with all my heart. And so, now, my friends, we part ways. You to life, and I to death. And God alone knows which one is better. Ah, my friends, thank you for being here with me at my final moments. Crito, you have always been a true friend to me, and even though you encouraged me to escape from this prison to live my life, as we have discussed, I cannot do so. I must be true to Athens and her judgment of me, and I do not fear death, for death is another exploration and shall show us, shall show me, things that I have always longed to see, the gods themselves, perhaps, the great heroes of the past. And so, my friends, I face it cheerfully and willingly. And even though I know that sadness is with you, I must confess for myself that the better part is mine. Ah, here, it has arrived. Thank you. To death, my friends, and to a new, a new adventure. <laughs> Please, do not weep. For this reason, I have sent Xanthope and the children away, that I might die in peace. I begin to feel it working on me. Crito, I owe to Ascalopus a cock. Please, make sure that you pay it to him. <laughs>